Hey guys, and welcome back to the Trash Kingdom. If you're new here, in this series, I'm rebuilding and animating a huge Lego haul I bought earlier this year. You can find the full story on my channel. In today's video, we'll be briefly leaving the medieval world and traveling to a new era. An era of exploration. An era of danger. An era of adventure. Uh, let's try that again. An era of adventure. That's right, we're finally going to be building some of those adventurer sets I teased in earlier videos. Adventurers has always been one of my absolute favorite themes. In particular, I really love the desert sub theme, which originally released in 1998. I can't tell you how many hours I spent staring at Lego catalogs when I was a kid, just dreaming of owning these super cool sets. And I was actually lucky enough that my parents gave me a few of these sets for my birthday, back in the 90s. And speaking of the 90s, do any of you remember these? I feel like the new catalogs are so sterile compared to what we had back in the day. Anyway, before I started making this video, I wasn't really sure which exact sets I had in this haul. Fortunately, I found some of the adventurer builds still intact, and before I washed all of those loose pieces earlier this year, I put aside anything I thought looked adventurer-y. Unfortunately, that meant that I had another round of cleaning to do. I'll be honest, these pieces were seriously dirty, so I decided the best thing to do would be to break everything down, clean the pieces, and then sort them into the sets that I had. I did run into a few snags along the way, I discovered most of the tires had completely deteriorated, and a few of the palm leaves and other minor pieces were either broken or heavily scratched. I decided I'd just throw these out and replace them with a future Brickling quarter, and hoped that I had enough pieces to build just one of these sets in the time being. After breaking down the sets, I gave them a rinse and a scrub with Dawn soap, and gave them a spin in my trusty salad spinner and let them dry overnight. Hey look, a map. I loved these pieces as a kid. Huh? I guess Johnny Thunder wants to take a closer look too. Huh, is he after the ruby? Wait, another Johnny Thunder? Two Johnny Thunders? This one seems a bit different though. I think the blacksmith's shoddy craftsmanship might have messed with the timelines. Oh well, looks like they're gonna work together to find that ruby. <coughs> or maybe not. Anyway, after the pieces dried, I decided I wanted to build set 5909, Desert Expedition. This set actually had a few different set numbers, and there was even a version that came with a cool mummy storage container, which I didn't find in this haul. But that's fine with me, because I actually never had this set when I was younger, and I was really excited to start building it. As you can see, I did a quick piece count to check if I was missing anything, and predictably I was. So I went back to those huge bins I sorted and cleaned earlier this year and found most of the pieces I needed. There were a few that were nowhere to be found, so I'll have to substitute them with pieces from my current collection. But that's what's great about LEGO, you don't really need to follow the instructions 100%. And not to worry, I'll put in a Bricklink order at some point to get the correct pieces. And after all that, it's finally time to build. So hold on to your adventuring hats, and let's get to it. Oh yeah, I forgot. Uh, future Johnny stole the map. Guess he wants to get to that ruby first. This set comes with a single palm tree and a cook fire placed upon a desert tanned plate. Which I found was actually a really effective way to add a bit of desert scenery into a set that was primarily focused on vehicles. 
Hmm, guess something good is cooking. The set also comes with a sarcophagus, which, again, I thought was a really good addition, and firmly placed the set in the world of adventure and archaeology. Hey, he got the map back. The next build was this car. I don't know much about cars, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's based on some kind of 1930s roadster. Like most of the theme, I'm pretty sure it was ripped directly from an Indiana Jones movie. Either way, I think it's the perfect little build. I love the exposed engine and storage space. Oh, well, watch out, Scorpion! This was another piece that seriously unlocked some memories for me. Looking back, I really wish they had added, like, camels or scarabs or some other desert creature to the theme. But if we only had one option, I think it was a great piece. And here we have the final build for the set. A little prop plane. I love the patchwork print, as well as the fierce, I guess, shark face they added to the aircraft body. But here's going to be my major complaint. Why did they have to be stickers? There were so many beautifully printed pieces in this theme. I don't understand why they chose not to print these plain pieces. Oh, and off they go. The adventures of new and old Johnny will continue in part two. Oh, and here's a quick look at the minifigures that were actually included in the set, along with their prices. Now, character names in the adventurers are famously different depending on region and year that they were released. So I'm just going to name them as I remember them as a kid, but feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. First up, we got good old Dr. Lightning. I love the whole look of this figure. The pith hat and contrasting red bow tie and green pants. I think he fits the perfect uh, professor archetype. And this backpack was another favorite of mine. It could hold two accessories and store a little tile piece inside. Up next, we've got Harry Kane, which I feel like he might have been bullied a bit in school with that name. But anyway, I actually thought he was so cool as a kid. And I love the helmet and goggle pieces, which I believe were first introduced in this series. Up next, we've got Sam Sinister, who I will say looks pretty sinister. Those eyes just kind of stare into your soul. Ugh. And lastly, we've got the main villain of the series, Baron Von Baron. He's got a hook hand, a face scar, and a monocle. I feel like Lego just really wanted you to know he was evil. Like, without a doubt, this guy's evil. All joking aside though, he is one of my favorite villains in all of LEGO's original IPs. Well, probably my favorite villain. And here's a look at the set as a whole. According to Bricklink, this set originally retailed for 20 US dollars. And today it's worth about $109 used and $168 new. Overall, I'm really pleased with this set. The small prop plane is definitely the highlight. But on a closer look, I'm also really impressed with the car build. And with the addition of the small desert scene and sarcophagus, I feel like this set was a fantastic value for only $20. I do feel like if it was released today, it would definitely have less minifigures and no desert side build. However, I feel like this set has one major downside, and that would be the stickers, which ultimately is why I'm giving it a score of 4 out of 5 goats. Almost perfect, but not quite. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Would you have bought this set when it was originally released? And would you pick it up today? And what do you think of the Adventurer's theme as a whole? I should say, as much as I love this theme, in hindsight, the subject matter does seem a bit problematic. I mean, the good guys and the bad guys were literally grave robbers. But that may be a discussion for another video. Either way, I am happy to see that LEGO still has a love for Johnny Thunder and his friends, as he and elements of the theme continue to pop up in modern sets. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more of these videos, and let me know in the comments what you'd like to see in the future. And until next time, see ya!